from my book, The Streetwise Cycle. It's a collection of short stories about a homeless man here in Los Angeles. And we're here at Occupy LA, and I thought this would be a perfect place to do a guerrilla reading of this book. The story I'm reading is called Fortune 500. Mark turned to see who'd sat down beside him on the bench, readying a professional smile, just in case. Great. A stinky homeless man in a greasy coat too heavy for the weather. Mark inched away from the old man. He very much needed to not smell like street people right now. Pop sneered. You sit on a bench in a public park, anybody might sit down next to you. My ass has as much a right as yours to be on this bench. He stretched his legs and pushed back his shoulders, sidling closer to the suit. Pops chuckled to himself. Mark frowned and crossed his legs, leaning farther away. He flicked an invisible bit of fluff from his knee. The sunlight suddenly caught the nap of his suit. Shit, they'd know it was off the rack and make their decision right then. He'd seen people turn down for less, last year's lapel width or the wrong MBA. The sour look on the suit's face gave Pops a sharp pain in his gut. This was why he didn't like to come downtown. Nine to five, these people thought they owned the place. Every evening, they cleared out and left it to the dealers and the whores. At least they'd talk to Pops. They knew Pops' money was as green as anybody else's. Mark looked at his watch. Fifteen more minutes before he could walk the four blocks, take the elevator to the 33rd floor, and arrive at a time that said punctual, but not desperate. Not nearly so desperate as he felt. He flipped open his manila folder to review the job description again. Pops looked at the papers over the suit's shoulder. Job interview, Pops said. Mark said, yes, making his voice as crisp and unfriendly as he could. The ice in the man's voice sounded like a challenge to Pops. What job? Mark stiffened. Now the stinky bum wanted to talk to him. He'd show him. Business valuation associate, he announced crisply. Pops looked at the patch of white in the man's hair, the lines on his face. Aren't you kind of old for entry level? Mark looked at the homeless man, full on. He knew financial advisory services? Pops didn't like being scrutinized so closely. He pulled his arms and legs in close across his body. Mark could see the coat was Burberry. The style was 15 years old at least, and filthy, but it was the real deal. He had to take the chance. Who do you know at Deloitte? Mark asked. Edward Monaghan, Susan Brownlow, Ara Carpetian. It was all Mark could do not to let his jaw drop. Those were Deloitte's top West Coast people. Pop smiled. George Miller, I supervised him early on. He had the man's attention now. This was fun. Miller the killer, Mark asked. Pops leaned back against the bench again. He turned up his face to catch the warm rays of the sun. Businessmen who spent their days in climate-controlled buildings lost the ability to enjoy this. He'd lost it once and never would again. Ain't got gasoline to start your car. Your manpower drives your shopping car. No cash money, but you got your heart. Street.